Well, can you believe it? 2016 is about to officially have the final curtain drop down on it. And for a lot of people, it probably can happen soon enough. Too many deaths, a disastrous presidential election, at least in this country. Uh, not exactly been a great year. With that said, the Chicago Cubs did finally win the World Series. So while a lot of people are out there pooning the hell out of this year, that was 2016, I can't say it was all bad. It wasn't all bad. It was pretty bad. It was pretty crummy, especially from a wrestling standpoint. It was really crummy. It wasn't the worst year ever. I'll put it that way. I'll take the year where I was bouncing around from place to place as a kid and homeless for a period of time. That's probably the worst year of my life. 1993. Yeah, that would probably be the worst year. And even then, the Bulls still won an NBA championship. So, there you go. All right, so let's go ahead and knock out this one last OTRS Central Q&A for 2016 and close the book on this chapter of this channel mercifully, easily, the worst year in this channel's history by far. Uh, Holland Chance, when Triple H goes into the Hall of Fame someday, should he induct himself and talk about all the things he's done since he's got UGA? Now, this is a great question to kick off any Q&A. In fact, you could argue it is worthy of its own Q&A entirely. With that said, when Triple H goes into the Hall of Fame, should he induct himself? Well, who else could induct him? Is there a super god that we don't fucking know about? I mean, you could maybe make the argument that the entire Breakfast Club and Click should have to do it. And maybe that would be just enough to get by, but I don't know if it would feel worthy of his holiness. Um, the bigger and more pressing question is, how does anybody else even stand up or compete with him when he gets inducted into the Hall of Fame? I mean, he has to go into the class by himself, right? Everything about him has to be inducted, right? Every group that he's been a part of, every faction that he's been a part of, every match that he's ever been a part of. It has to be Triple H's year all the way. There is no compromise. That's the even more pressing question to your brilliant question here. Andrew Harrington 4, do you think WWE in 2016 was worse than WWE in 2015? Absolutely. I watched much less. I cared much less. This year was worse than the previous, no question. Ryan Steele, do you think 2017 will be the year WWE pushes Naomi as a serious contender to one of the women's championships? <laughs> no. No. It's crazy because their women's titles will always kind of be a revolving door, and just about everybody gets a run with it, just like the men in the locker room used to with Kelly Kelly. And lo and behold, Naomi's the one that doesn't get a run with it. So no, I don't think so. Um... And who on the current roster had the worst 2016 in WWE? Uh, from just a character standpoint, not a money-making standpoint. From a business standpoint, the guy made himself, I'm sure, plenty of money this year. But he probably cost himself some money, too, and that's Roman Reigns. You know, on the one hand, here's the guy, wins the Rumble, or excuse me, loses his title at the Rumble, has WrestleMania built around, in part, him trying to get his title back from God. So he main events with God, after God's the one that cost him the title at Royal Rumble. And then he gets the title back, and he's booed all the way. And then he gets suspended for Adderall usage, and the company kind of backs off of him a little bit. Then they put the U.S. title on him, and people are still booing him all the time. Uh, so from like a character standpoint... It would be Roman Reigns. And sorry for mixing up 2016 for 2015 there, but you know it just kind of shows what type of impact Reigns has actually had on me too. American Ghoul 98, thoughts on the last SmackDown beating Raw in viewership, and do you think it will be a trend in 2017? Um, I, I'm not – one week does not a trend make or indicate that it's going to be a future trend. Um, I really don't think so. I think the next two weeks – um, especially when Raw is going up against the college football playoff on January 9th. SmackDown better beat Raw on the ratings that week. Um, but especially with no more Monday Night Football going on anymore, you would assume the ratings and interest will kick up just a tad. Like, I'll start watching Raw for a little while, at least in 2017, now that Monday Night Football is done. 
Um, so I don't think it's going to be a trend. With January 2nd, Monday being a holiday weekend type of day, maybe that week and the week after with the college football playoff going head-to-head -head with Raw, maybe SmackDown could win one or both of those weeks in the ratings, but after that, I don't think so. And most certainly the company's not going to allow that to happen for an extended period of time. In the Rope Show wants to know, Mr. Rout just competed in the 5th 2017 YWC wrestling debate, which is interesting that it's 2017 debate, even though it's in 2016. But what I know, that's your Louisiana boys for you. Any chance you will participate in the next one? New year, new me, new channel. What the fuck? Why not? So I hope you watched this part of this video. So that way you got your fucking answer. Reach out to me on Twitter and give me some of the details and we'll go from there, brother. All right, let's see here. The Owens, when are you finally going to answer my fucking questions for your Q&A? How about right fucking now? I'm pretty sure I've answered your questions before, too. <laughs> I like that awesome douchebaggery that we get sometimes, and I commend you for it. Calling attention to yourself by telling me that I didn't do something that I actually did. It's kind of like my old lady. You know, yelling at you for not listening to things that you were actually never told. Um sitting there and getting crap for stuff that the other person actually did. Now that's love. And that's exactly how it goes. And you fellas actually have a woman, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Michael Corbin, thoughts on Braun Strowman and Baron Corbin, and who do you expect or want to be fired from WWE after WrestleMania, if anyone? Um, out of sheer principle, if I was going to fire anybody from WWE after WrestleMania, it'd be Kevin Dunn and Michael P.S. Hayes. I forget wrestlers. I'm not trying to fire wrestlers. I'd like to fire those two fucking jokers. Um, thoughts on Braun Strowman and Baron Corbin? Well, they're really trying to force Braun. But again, I'm, I'm always going to be facing an uphill battle trying to care about my younger, roided-up Uncle Udo. Period. You know, what's, what's next? I'm going to create a hashtag push Uncle Udo? I don't think so. Uh, and then as far as Baron Corbin goes... Um... I think they could have done more with him. I thought 2016, especially after WrestleMania, you have him win the Battle Royal, and then you really don't do shit with him. Like you're wasting time with him with Kalisto, and you know what was he on the in the main event uh, Triple Threat at the last SmackDown of the year? You know, you either get a guy like that, and you're going to package him in a certain way. That means you, he should be pushed a certain way, and they really dropped the ball with him. But big surprise. Uh, Michael Corvin, would you ever consider putting up a t-shirt show store, excuse me, for the show at or on Pro Wrestling Tees? Yes. Stay tuned. And Pro Wrestling Tees, you stay tuned too, god damn you. Uh, wrestling NC Podcast. If you could have one wrestling-related wish for 2017 come true, what would it be and why? Be specific if possible. The general would just be for the product to be better, um, but that's more the general. Um, I would like, come July, to be able to go back to Waterloo for a couple of days for the Hall of Fame weekend there at the Dan Gable Museum, because from what I understand, one of the inductees is going to be none other than Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff. Who is Mr. Wonderful? Paul Orndorff. Who is Paul Orndorff? Mr. Wonderful. How many Mr. Wonderfuls are there? The answer is I don't care what anybody says. There's one in his name is Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff. That'd be fucking epic to be able to meet Mr. Wonderful. Absolutely epic. And maybe sneak in a couple of videos with the old, old OTRS Central Off the Rope Show crew. I think a lot of you might like that too. So that might be one wrestling-related wish. From a pure product standpoint, probably Taker uh, versus Cena at Mania for the title and Taker winning the belt from Cena. That'd probably be the other one. Uh, then the other question, fuck, Mary kill, Naomi, Jojo, Tr Trish Stratus. I would f fuck Naomi, marry Trish Stratus, and sorry, I'd have to kill Jojo. I don't know if that's a surprise to y'all, but the, but the the feelings and the loincloth for Trish go back a lot further than the ones for Naomi. And furthermore, I've had plenty of black women over the years. I've never had me a white woman. So if I was going to marry any of the three, why would I not 
Just sit there and do something entirely different. I'm going to go with Trish. Now, well, to clarify, you have to clarify with Trish. Are we talking about back of the day, big booby blonde, fat ass Trish? Are we talking about uh, kind of borderline anorexic looking brunette, lost my ass yoga Trish? Then I might revert to marrying Naomi and pumping like 12 babies in her, just completely ruining her life. Uh, Grace X Lord, thoughts on Eli Drake and Broken Matt Hardy. However, is Broken Matt that at WWE arenas, People chant, delete, delete, delete. I haven't paid attention to TNA very much in 2016, so I have no opinion on Eli Drake whatsoever. I barely even know who the hell you're talking about, just to be blunt. Um, I'll try and... As people seem to really like him. Uh, WWE didn't the first time they had him in developmental, but I'll try and pay a little more attention to TNA product in 2017. In terms of Broken Matt Hardy... Let me say this about Broken Matt Hardy. It was kind of like Matt Hardy got drunk one night, got stoned one night, got tired of getting into fisticuffs with a Rebby Sky, and said, I'm just going to create a character that mocks a lot of things and shits on a lot of things and clearly indicates that there are no fucks given. He did something different. He's doing something different. And I applaud that. Even if I think a lot of it is dumb, hokey, and stupid. It may be one of the most interesting things that Matt Hardy has ever done. And frankly, I can see where it's one of the most interesting things that's been done in professional wrestling over the past several years. I get why people would gravitate to it and people would like it. There's been a lot of shit in wrestling. At least somebody's trying to do something interesting. Whether or not it always is... Eh, that is up to interpretation, honestly. But as far as how over he is that people chant, delete, 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 I don't know. Is that an indication that it's really that over? Because here's the thing. If it was really that over, TNA on Pop TV would be averaging double the viewers they are right now. If it was such a hot thing and it was so awesome and so incredible and he was truly that fucking over then it would actually equate to drawing eyeballs on the product. And it just doesn't. It just doesn't. Period. So, over my ass. It may be over with the TNA audience that has decreased significantly over the past few years. It may be over with the internet crowd that happens to be in attendance at the WWE live events. But in terms of an over that really truly fucking matters and makes a big business impact and difference for TNA, the answer is absolutely not. And I defy you to prove it to me otherwise. Um, and then why don't you give TNA a chance? They have people that look like real wrestlers and everyone has something to do. A couple of things. Number one, I gave that company a chance for 12, 13 damn years. Why should I invest any more of my precious time on them? You know, and you can sit there and say, well, it's different, different people running it, different shit and all this. But that's a lot of past burnt history to get over. And it's not easy to get over it. In terms of giving them another chance, that probably comes in 2017. Probably, not definitely, but probably. I, I get your point about they have people that actually look like real wrestlers. I do agree with that. Everybody has something to do. I cannot comment on because I have not been watching or following the product, really. So, but I may very well give them a chance again this upcoming year. Uh, Nation of Enter. Will we ever see the return or creation of older or newer series on the channel, like 15 Reasons Why Dolph Ziggler Sucks? The answer is yes. Stay tuned. MJK1877. Which direction should the WWE head in terms of the Universal title? It seems pointless in allowing Reigns to keep the U.S. title. I honestly don't know what the fuck direction they should go with that Universal title. At this point in time, if they're going to insist on keeping it on Owens to Mania, they might as well just let Jericho win the strap from him at Mania. For, I think for a lot of people, Jericho has been one of the more interesting things about the product over the past year. You know, the whole thing about the future, the future, well, the future fucking looks bleak, and the present sucks his dick right now anyway, so 
Why not make the present a little bit better? I mean, I'm just saying. Um, does it seem pointless to have Reigns keep the U.S. title? If they don't do good things with him, then yes. If not, no. Uh, Josh Morlino, who do you think will win the Royal Rumble this year, and will they win the title? I do think whoever wins the Rumble probably wins whatever title they pursue. I'm still going to hold on to my dream of The Undertaker winning the Royal Rumble and beating John Cena for the strap at WrestleMania. Don't take that dream from me. The Doc Soliloquy. Why was there so much hate for hot potatoing titles in 2016? It's been done since the late 90s and hasn't had this much hate till now. I disagree with that. There's been hate for that for a number of years. Um, there, yeah, there's been hate for that for a number of years. I think ever since the late 90s. You know, that was associated with Russo, fairly or not. He's WCW when Russo was in WWF. They hot shotted or hot potato titles all the damn time, too. You know, I mean, so uh, I disagree with the assertion, respectfully, that this has just become a huge issue. Uh, it's been a huge issue for years. And then the Ben Wardy, who was the best crowd worker in WWE all time, Hogan. Now I don't fucking know. Because the thing is, you could just sit there and say who gets the loudest reaction, but if the reaction isn't the type of reaction that was designed to get, how effective is that really? Are you really working the crowd that well? Like, Cena always gets a reaction. So in one sense, he works the crowd. Because everybody cares one way or another. But, after all these years, he still can't get everybody to care the way about him they're supposed to, and it's designed to be. So, is he really that good of a worker? Uh, of the crowd? I don't know about all that. Um, Gerald Bravlowski. Has the brand split worked, and also does the WWE need to cut down the amount of pay-per-views it has in the year? Pay-per-views question, you're asking a question you already know the answer to, frankly, and that is an absolute yes. Has the brand split worked? I don't know. Has it? I'm not watching either show right now. I mean, it depends on your definition of work. From the ability to have a Raw tour and a SmackDown tour at the same time, it probably has worked for the WWE. From a product standpoint, I don't know that it has. Um, let's see here. Jerry Lagaswaran. Does WWE need the Breakfast Club and part-timers to carry WrestleMania 33, or can the newer guys be relied on to deliver a great show? They need the part-timers. They need the Breakfast Club. They need anybody that fucking matters or has any type of name or drawing power or star power or whatsoever. They need them for that show. What are you going to build a show around? Kevin Owens, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, Sami Zayn? Oh, get the fuck out of here with that shit. You build a WrestleMania around those guys, it's going to feel like a WrestleMania 11 or WrestleMania 13. It's going to be a piece of shit. Uh, you need people that fans actually give a fuck about, that we can actually care about. We need star power, because there is no star power. you got to have star power. So, yes, they need those guys. I champ V. Should Trump enter the Rumble and eliminate Byron Saxton dressed as a <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Now, it would be interesting to see if you had somebody impersonate Donald Trump enter the Royal Rumble. <laughs> Maybe we could dust off the old Charlie Haas uh, imitation gimmick where he was Haas Hogan and everything. <laughs> Maybe he could beat Donald J. Trump. <laughs> oh, that would be fucking awesome. <laughs> and the Dead Sidron. The percentage of people who stopped watching wrestling in 2016, I don't know the... The ratings drop from the beginning of the end of the year. Um, it's probably over 10%. I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm not looking at all the numbers to be able to give you that. But then that's just measuring domestic viewership. And even when we talk about ratings, we talk about the Nielsen's, it could be viewed as a somewhat flawed system because every single person who watches doesn't actually have the Nielsen box. And, you know, you're not, get, not getting all that shit. But it has the WWE picked up. Uh, those viewers, and then some in international markets by getting new television deals in foreign countries by getting more audience there. You know, I think part of the problem sometimes is 
looking at the WWE from an old, <clears throat> excuse me, an old domestic company with international aspirations to what is becoming increasingly more and more an international company with dwindling domestic roots and interest. That's kind of what WWE is. Victor Tran 562, considering the good year he's had this year, how would you book The Miz for 2017? Relevant and in a position to matter. In terms of specifics, not going to go through that, don't need to. But I want to keep him in a position where he matters, and I want to make sure I utilize him well. All right, let's see here. Um, second coming of Ali, if the WWE approached you for a lead creative role, what would you say? No. Absolutely not. Because number one, that's fantasy. That bullshit's never happening. Number two, at the end of the day, the only lead creative role is held by Vincent McMahon. So I could come up with the best laid out storyboard. I could have shit mapped out for weeks and months at a time. It could be great. Everybody could be signed off on it. I could even get the, the praise of God himself. I could put all of this into the three books of the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley and take it into Vince's office, and he could completely crap on it and say, no, we're just going to throw out a random fucking wrestling match. So, no, why would you want, want to work in the creative process of WWE? So that way, that way you could get annoyed by fucking Stephanie, deal with Triple H and his massive ego, have to deal with Kevin Dunn and his Bugs Bunny stupidity, and Vince McMahon and his senility? I'm good. I'm good. In order for it to be a real lead creative role, and for me to take it in a hypothetical world, it would have to be, okay, Jeff, you are in charge of Raw, or you are in charge of SmackDown, or you are in charge of NXT, and you are completely, totally in charge of it, you have autonomy all over it, and then you will be held accountable to the performance and the feedback and the results of those shows to a Hunter, to a Vince, what have you. But I can't have anybody meddling or undercutting me or going behind me or changing shit on me because then that defeats the whole purpose of doing anything whatsoever. You know, that's just the way it is. Uh, let's see here. Any other questions we can get to? Um, Hard Boiled Egg, what are the two world title main event matches you would make for WrestleMania? Uh, Cena Taker and probably Owens Jericho. Why not? Let's see here. Mason Clark, if a wrestling hell demon forced you to relive a terrible wrestling era, would it be WCW 2000 or WWF 1993? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Professional Wrestling 2016. There, I changed it on you. Carlos Palma, do you think WWE will get better next year or is it going to be even worse? Well, I hope it's going to get better. I don't know that it's going to get better. Kind of sort of seems that every year it gets a little bit worse and a little bit worse. But hopefully there will be enough to get me through 2017. Because um, God knows I need it. And God most certainly knows that this piece of crap channel and what it's become needs it too. Um... ENC98, I know it's hard to narrow down, but your favorite Dolph Ziggler moment of 2016. out Right there. That's the favorite moment. Fuck you. <laughs> Jerk. And virtual sleaze. Opinions on the UK championship. Seems to me like WWE is just making belts for more people to feel important. No, it's more so uh, creating marketing ploys to try and grow and expand the network. And get some eyeballs on some different talent. You know, it's an excuse to try out guys. Um, so it serves its purpose. I don't give a shit about it. That's my thoughts. But I get why they're doing it. I get why they're doing it. And no, this doesn't need to lead to them bringing back a UK or, heaven forbid, a European championship because they already have too many fucking belts on each show. Too many champions. When you have too many champions in part... Nobody matters because everybody's a fucking winner. Oh, Christ. All right. I think that's enough for the Q&A. Thanks to all you guys that submitted your questions. We can now finally put the wraps on 2016, mercifully. 
and let's look forward to better things from wrestling and most certainly this channel in the year to come.